class? Welcome to another thrilling week here at Beetle University. As you likely know, I am Professor Moptop, and as you also may or may not know, I love to say thank you. Thank you a million times over, and then another million times, in case you're keeping track, that's two million, and there's a bonus with that. This week you're going to be getting four hunks of audio. One of them is all about uh, the lost songs from Let It Be. There was a lot of uh, time that the Beatles had to figure out what they were going to do during the Let It Be sessions of January of 1969. Sometimes what they would do is they would try to remember a song that they wrote early, early on in their career and then revive it. They did this in the past a couple times with uh, I'll Follow the Sun, which was about three or four years old when they recorded it. They did it with What Goes On, and they also did it with When I'm 64. In 1969, they revived the one after 909, which you heard about a couple weeks ago. That worked out uh, very well for them, although there's quite a few songs, and you'll hear clips of audio where they can't quite remember everything. They did not work out as well. One is a song called Because I Know You Love Me So. You'll hear a little clip of the audio, and you could hear as soon as they start singing it, they recognize it and try to sing it together well. It was written likely in 1960, and uh, as they started writing better and better songs, they moved on. You'll hear about I'll Wait Till Tomorrow. You'll hear Won't You Please uh, Say Goodbye, Too Bad About Sorrows, I Lost My Little Girl, which is one that you might recognize from Paul McCartney's uh, 1990s MTV Unplugged performance, and there's a song called Thinking of Linking. You'll hear some... Um, some uh, clips of these don't get too excited because they aren't performed especially well, but they are very historic and very cool. There's a song called Frankie Rabbit and also a little bit of Step Inside Love, which was recorded by Cilla Black after the Beatles wrote it and offered it to her. You're also going to be getting three hunks of audio this week on one really big Beatles song. It's called The Long and Winding Road, and of course, it's also from the Let It Be album. In June of 1966, Paul McCartney bought a farm in Scotland, and to get to this um, this uh, farmhouse, you had to go up a very curvy, lengthy road, and Paul started thinking about a long and winding road as early as that. In late, in late 1968, he started writing the song, and he was sort of thinking of it as a Ray Charles-type song. Um, in The Long and Winding Road, not only does Paul mention about time and passages, but he mentioned his, mentions the images of nature and sadness, which are a little bit unusual for Paul McCartney. He was uh, starting to grow up and mature with his songwriting, even more so by the end of the decade. Um, there's themes of abandonment and the cyclical cyclical quality of life. It's a very, very well-written Paul McCartney song. He played it a few times in January 69 for the band and crew. Throughout the month, he tried to teach the band, who weren't especially enthused about it. John especially was really dismissive of it, but by the time they finally recorded it for reals, he um, came around to it. John actually plays the bass on that song. Now, when they uh, got to the Apple Studios after their 12-day labor strike, when George Harrison quit the band, they um, started working on that. On the 26th of January, they recorded the version that would become the official version of it. They tried it a couple times after that. Most, uh, most likely, they just did it so they could get a good film, of uh, a good performance on film of the band performing the song. After they finished the sessions, Glenn Johns made a, um, a, a collection of songs from the Get Back sessions, which of course were rejected, and ultimately those wound up in the hands of Phil Spector. You'll hear great detail about what Phil Spector did to these recordings. He took Paul McCartney's uh, double-tracked vocal away, he edited the song and extended it by repeating one of the verses twice, and then there's a part where Paul McCartney is uh, kind of talking, you'll hear about that too which was also eliminated. Now, at first, Paul McCartney signed off on the finished project, but then he changed his mind, but by the time he realized that he didn't really like what Phil Spector did to the album, it was much too late, and this would ultimately lead directly to the breakup. It's one of the few songs that Paul McCartney would play live in the 1970s with Wings. He didn't play a lot of uh, the Beatles songs until the late part of the 1980s when he started to tour again. Um... You will be getting four hunks of audio about the long winding road and the lost songs of Let It Be. As always, thank you a million times over. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Yours truly, I'm Professor Mopped Up. Everyone have a pleasant day, week, afternoon, and evening. Thank you again a million times over. Times two.